Wait. Hello, everyone. Um, today I'm presenting automating Apple uh, package branching workflows with eBranch. Yeah. Um, uh, as a quick introduction, I'm Michel Salin. I'm a production engineer at uh, the company formerly known as Facebook. We are now Meta. Um, yeah, um, I work on the Linux team here, and uh, basically, I we um, we work on um, upstream work in uh, Fedora and CentOS stream. Facebook uh, Meta deploys uh, CentOS stream on most of our servers, so uh, we consider like uh, basically uh, working on Fedora and CentOS to like uh, help improve the community. Yes, Neil, Meta Platforms Inc. Uh, yeah, so like uh, we focus on uh, driving uh, improvements upstream, and basically, uh, event it will benefit us and also benefit the community. So it's a nice win-win situation. Uh, I can be found on um, on the Fedora um, IRC and Metrics um, servers as Salim MA, which is my FAS account. So yeah, uh, that's it for the introduction. Uh, let's begin. Of course, my clicker is not working again. Oh. So today we are going to talk about what makes uh, Apple special if, um, and different from uh, contributing to Fedora in general. Uh, the workflows um, that uh, you need to follow when you're working with Apple, and then um, why I wrote eBranch. And then uh, we'll walk through some examples. Uh, there will be a packaging uh, hack fest after this uh, where people can try this. Um, and I'll be um, curious to see, like, uh, to hear what people find. Um, some future work that I have not gotten in uh, to do yet, and then some uh, resources, and and then we'll open for Q and A. So, uh, what makes Apple special? So, you have the Fedora that uh, we know and love. Um, on one end, you have. Um, Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS Stream on the other hand, and then you have Apple. Uh, so basically, um, since uh, Stream launched, basically the, the workflow is that um, at um, certain points in time, um, Fedora is branched off for CentOS Stream. Not all packages uh, get branched, and um, it's only the packages that Red Hat wants to support. And in fact, a lot of the packages that get branched off for Stream ended up being uh, retired uh, later on if uh, Red Hat decides that, no, actually, we don't uh, need this package and we don't want to support this package in production. Uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux minor releases are then cut from CentOS Stream every six months, I think. And yeah, so packages in uh, Enterprise Linux are supported. Packages in um, packages that are not supported basically are left out and are eligible to be included in um, Apple, which is uh, extra packages for Enterprise Linux. It kind of um, reminds me of the old, um, when Fedora first launched and you have Fedora Core, which is maintained by Red Hat employees, and then you have Fedora Extras, which is a community. And Apple kind of have the vibe of being the Fedora Extras of the past. So to compare and contrast, Fedora releases are roughly maintained for about 13 months. Basically, when Fedora 33 launch, it's uh, maintained until one month after Fedora 35 launches. CentOS Stream is maintained for five years. And Red Hat Enterprise gets maintained for, if I get it right, it's about 12 years. Five years full support, which matches what CentOS Stream gets. And then five years maintenance, and then excellent life phase for another two years for paying customers. So if you are the average Fedora contributor, you probably are like, wait, you know, like uh, uh, normally, you know, like you work on keeping your packages up to date in Rawhide. Um, on the stable branches, you might backport like um, uh, new features if they're not backward uh, incompatible and security fixes. You don't sign up for like uh, maintaining a package for 10 years even if you're paid to work on it, right? Like, um, this is why Red Hat Enterprise only uh, have a much smaller set of packages. Like, uh, you don't want to commit to backporting, like, uh, 
changes for 10 years, especially for things like um, LLVM or like a, which doesn't, uh, which only has one uh, release moving forward or Python 2 is um, end of life. You don't want to accidentally um, commit to supporting something that's end of life for 10 years. So Fedora packages get uh, branched off automatically for new Fedora releases. They do not get branched off automatically whenever there is a new Apple. And uh, the maintainers have to opt in and say, yes, please branch my package. Um, which means that every new Apple release uh, requires bootstrapping everything that's not in a, that's not in CentOS stream. Let's see how that works. So first CentOS stream uh, drops, um, I link to the blog post uh, where it's announced. And then like uh, we make Apple available. Um, so right now Apple 9 uh, is building against CentOS stream 9 when uh, Red Hat Enterprise 9 is released, uh, Apple 9 will start tracking um, Red Hat Enterprise instead, and Apple Next 9 will uh, will continue tracking stream. And then you have to get Fedora packages in Apple, which can be fun. Uh, like uh, you you know like uh, you want to work on something, you're like, oh wait, this package is not in. Okay, fine. Like uh, let me ask the maintainers. Like, hey, can you actually um branch like uh, this for, app, uh, for Apple 9, please. And then like, oh, wait, no, it has like five other dependencies. And then you're like, uh, okay, fine. Let's file bugs for like those five dependencies and link them together. And then like, wait, those five needs another, you know, like each of them has like three dependencies. It's a bit tedious to like uh, both do this by hand and also like to keep track of. Uh, so I have like 20 requests in flight and like uh, which one of them has progressed, which one has not. Like we have um, since last year, we have a workflow for actually um, um, escalating a stalled request without actually like uh, doing the non-responsive maintenance process, which is heavy handed and it's kind of, you know, like it sounds hostile, like, hey, you know, like if you don't respond, we're going to like um, take away your packages. Um, the the state is simply that um, federal maintainers, a lot of them, are not interested in Apple because they don't use Apple and because they don't want to maintain a package for 10 years or because, yeah, they, they're just not interested. A lot of federal maintainers are volunteers, most of them. They are, you know, like, it's not your day job where like, you're like, oh, you know, like, uh, let's start each day by, um, by uh, looking at what bugs are assigned to me. You are a volunteer, right? You might have some spare time to work on Fedora in the weekends or, you know, like, um, you might, like, you might work on it um, as a, you know, like, 20%, like, um, thing at work. So, like, uh, you're not um, available on weekends. So, things take time. You cannot expect people to respond immediately and you don't want to badger them to death. Um, Fedora has proven packages and proven packages can build packages um, you know, like uh, if there's an emergency fix and the maintainer is not available or if you are doing a mass rebuild. But proven packages cannot request new branches. You actually have someone to, you, you need someone to actually be in the ACL for the package. So basically, uh, there is a stalled uh, uh, request workflow. The idea is that it's similar to the non-responsive maintainer, but much more limited in scope. You ask for like a package, you wait a week, if there's no respond, uh, you you ping the maintainer and meet in for them. If there's another week with no response, you can open a release engineering uh, ticket and say, hey, you know, like uh, I need this package branch. It's been two weeks. Um, the maintainer is not uh, responding to this. Um, can I get added to the ACL? And unlike the non-responsive process, it doesn't offer the package. You just get added to the ACL. So it's still a lot to like uh, keep track of, right? Like, um, I mean, processes are fine, but if you don't automate it, things will go sideways. Like um, uh, I've had like one of these uh, that uh, requests that was open for months. I, and I simply forgot that I filed it and I didn't file the um, relaunch ticket. So I wrote eBranch, uh, the 
credit for the name is uh, actually the name is based on uh, F branch, which um, which is um, written by a federal developer. Um, now I forgot his first name, but it's uh, J U H P. I'm bad at naming in general, and like uh, my first uh, name proposal. Oh yeah, it's Jens. I remember the Peterson part. I forgot the Jens part. Uh, yeah, like I'm terrible at naming, and like uh, this, like uh, thankfully someone suggested that you know, like hey, you know, your initial name for this is terrible. Uh, pick a pick a new one, please. So it's a tool for branching federal packages for Apple. So eBranch, Apple, Apple branch. Uh, this is a quote I stole from Troy, uh, who said, yeah, like my biggest dependency chain requests have gone down four levels. So, you know, like depending on your branching factor, this is potentially a nightmare, right? Um, so this tool right now, like um, given like um, given a package, it will compute like, hey, you know, like what do you need? Like, uh, oh, my package A depends on like five packages that are not in like Apple 8 and say three that are not in Apple 9. And like of those five packages, you know, each of them has like so and such dependencies. It also keep track of this for you. So like um, you, uh, you can basically like uh, as you file bugs and like the bugs progress, uh, you, you can actually keep track of it in one place. I meant this will eventually also like uh, file the bugs for you and like um, do the follow-ups and like uh, relaunch tickets for you. It, that's not implemented yet. So let's look at some examples. Say, hey, you know, like um, I want to like um, package like a uh, Python B4, which is not in Apple 9. Like uh, what are the missing build requirements? It's like, oh yeah, uh, this thing uh, requires Python uh, DKIM PY and like Python pet app. I'm really bad at like ordering my slides. This meant to come, uh, to come earlier. So yeah, like um, you, there are several comments implemented right now. Like um, you can say, hey, is this package branched? Uh, and like, what are these packages uh, build requirements? Um, or like, um, what are the branches uh, that are available for this package in Fedora, which cover like Fedora and Apple? And the what are the missing build requirements, which we saw earlier? And then there's this other two comments that I'll that we'll discuss later: unfold and iterate. So there's a problem, right? Like um, not all dependencies that are missing for a package are actually needed. Uh, in Apple, like uh, especially like uh, oftentimes, like you don't want like uh, to. Um, there's a lot of uh, documentation or test dependencies that are missing, and you might decide to like, hey, um, it's too much work to get this done initially. Or when it comes to test dependencies, actually a lot of test dependencies are simply wrong. The Python packaging guidelines, for instance, uh, tell you that um, uh, coverage tests and like uh, type tests, type checking tests should not actually be run. The developers care about it. We care less about it since, hey, you know, like if they have a wrong type definition or like if the code is not uh, passing lint, it still functions the same way. A lot of uh, federal packages still have this additional test um, running because uh, upstream uh, decided to run them by default. And when you see them, like you want to fix, um, fix it going forward. And obviously you don't want to like um, unnecessarily um, have additional build requirements that you have to branch, request people to branch for you uh, in Apple. So um, I designed this tool right now so that when you want to get recursive dependencies, you can do it one step at a time. So first you unfold um, the existing like uh, missing uh, build requirements report. Uh, this will basically say, hey, I know like uh, before we have two dependencies, unfold say like, okay, keep track of these two and bring them to the top level of the of the report we generate. So instead of having a one key for Python before, now it has three keys. And then we can edit the JSON. Um, I'm going to add a tool for this. Uh, and you can say, hey, actually, um, after looking at upstream documentation, it turns out that this um, one of this dependency is actually optional. And then you can say like, okay, like a market to be skipped. 
And then you do iterate. And iterate says, hey, OK, for any new dependency that's not marked to be skipped, I'm going to compute uh, the missing build requirements for them. Oh, nil bit Troy, like uh, nil dependencies uh, go down five levels. So yeah, um, this is already uh, packaged uh, in copper for now, since I uh, only managed to get it in this morning, and I'm still quickly iterating on this. So like, uh, it's uh, you can just do DNF copper enable uh, salim ma slash e branch, and then you can install it. This installs a tool, and it basically uh, has a weak uh, recommendation on like a, on a companion package that installs like a CentOS 8 stream and CentOS 9 stream repos uh, on your system. So you can um, disable and like uh, rename so that they don't conflict with the actual like CentOS uh, stream repos. So you can like, um, so DNF repo query will work uh, as normal if you enable repo, the, mis the new ones. Uh, there's a, um, Apple Hackfest that uh, Carl George is uh, organizing after this. So like, um, I'll be there. Like, I'm happy for people to like uh, try the tool and like uh, we can discover, you know, like what what bugs there are, like what features people want um, to be implemented. So yeah, um, I need your help. As I um, as I mentioned at the beginning, like I'm super super terrible at naming. So like um, I spent uh, this morning actually renaming some of the comments, which I just realized the initial naming was really awkward, but that was the name I came up with when writing them. So yeah, that's, that's the reason as well that this tool is still version 001. I'm not uh, committing that the names are staying stable. And if uh, I'm sure there are a lot of workflow improvements that we can make. Uh, or uh, people are more than welcome to contribute code and test. Um, or like, um, this is, I'm normally on the Python packaging side, and this is like uh, one of the few times I write a new Python tool from scratch. So like uh, someone who is well-versed in PyProject will probably say like, oh no, like uh, this is not how you're supposed to, you know, like uh, set up your project. So I welcome like any uh, suggestions for improvement. I also welcome if people want to send me beer, especially badge and beer, subject to gift limits. So let's spend a few minutes on like uh, what um, I want to do next for this tool. And like, again, this is open source. Um, anyone is more than welcome to submit a PR. Um, filing a branch request, say like, hey, you know, like this is my report file. Um, and um, I want to file. Um, branch request uh, for Python DKM, uh, Python D DKIM, damn it, DKIMPY um, for Apple Mind, please. Or like, um, hey, um, given this like um, um, report of missing BS, file all the missing build requirements. A good suggestion from Carl. Um, yeah, um, Carl, do you want to like file a Bugzilla no, not Bazilla. File um, issue in Pagio for that because I will I will forget. Yeah, that's right. Like um, there should be some sort of linter. Like um, hey, um, if you see PyTest Runner, if you see like um, MyPy or like anything like that, like um, hey, this probably should not be branched. And following up on stale request, it's like hey, um, it'd be nice if you can use a tool to actually say like, ping, um, basically a. Uh, Ping all the stale uh, requests in this, and then like uh, escalate the stale requests by uh, to relaunch, or even automate the two, right? Like a uh, follow up on this report, and it should actually do like uh, let me see like when this request was filed. Let me check Bugzilla. Oh, it's been a week. Uh, let's do the follow up. Oh, it's been another week. Uh, let's file a relaunch ticket. Um, this is probably a bit more further up there, like a. Uh, Maybe like we can make um, this tool like even like a uh, trigger like um, a mock like a uh, chain build of all the missing BRs just to make sure that it uh, you can actually get them all to build. Um, given that in Apple like uh, we actually oftentimes we want to modify the spec to actually remove like some of the dependencies, this is probably a bit far out. Um, but the next one is actually important. Uh, we want to know like. Um, what build requirements 
are actually in sample stream. It's just that they are not pushed. And basically, uh, it's, uh, I thought of doing this by looking at GitLab and see like if the package actually exists. That turns out not to be a good idea. Like uh, the package could exist in samples, but like um, in the samples, like this Git repos, but uh, retired. So that's a dead package. Sometimes like the package was left out and like uh, it's not retired yet. So like looking at GitLab is not a good idea for this. Um, looking at Koji is probably better. You can say, hey, this package was built, but it's not tagged. Or this package was built and tagged, but it's not released. So it's probably filtered somewhere. Um, right now, this tool basically shell out um, to like a DNF. Uh, it might be nice to like uh, refactor this to actually use like the DNF Python API. I don't know if like it's going to change much uh, with DNF5 that's supposed to come um, later this year or early next year. So that's not a priority for now. And also like uh, the DNF Python bindings are not in PyPy. So like it makes it a bit annoying to like uh, package and, uh, and test if you have to rely on system dependencies. Uh, there's a question too, whether like uh, the dependency like a uh, resolution uh, module should be part of this or it can be like uh, used in other projects and therefore like maybe we should move it somewhere. Um, parallel building is another like um, question like uh, where does where should it live? Um, it would be nice to like make fat PKG support building in parallel. It already does chain build. It just doesn't do the dependency resolution. So like uh, you have to basically figure out yourself like what are the package groups you need to build this package. For some of our internal packages, like I actually, well, for some of our, the open source packages actually that we maintain, I actually have like a hacky script that calls up F branch to actually like uh, do the parallel build, but um, not actually do the build, just output uh, the build order and then like uh, trigger uh, fat PKG with it. But F branch like now doesn't deal well with, uh, with dynamic build requirements. Whereas like uh, getting them from um, DNF repo query actually gives you a more accurate uh, result. So yeah, um, uh, some of these um, to-dos are already filed in Pagur, some of them are not. Uh, so if there's anything that you think should be added, like uh, I think Carl is filing a bug, um, please like uh, go there and file your request. And yeah. Uh, let's look at some resources. Um, so I linked to um, the definitions, like what is uh, extra packages for enterprise Linux, how you can help. Uh, there is a special interest group uh, for Apple packaging uh, that basically uh, where a lot of these are hashed out, like um, how should we like uh, do um, the workflow for branching, you know, like what should we do if like um, if a package is not um, is built but published and all this fun policy um, questions. And there's a link to eBranch itself. Um, yeah, uh, well, that's faster than I thought it's going to be. Um, so I'm taking questions um, right now. And if there's no questions, we can also like, um, I can do a live demo of the tool. Oh, um, demo. And also apparently um, the Fedora CI system is not multi-arch. Hmm. Okay, let's see if this is uh, going to uh, break or not. Right. I'm just making sure I'm using the one I just packaged and not um, and not the the one from the development tree. So so this is eBranch, and we can say, hey, eBranch is the 
this uh, eternal terminal branch in Apple 8. Yes, it is. Is uh, eternal terminal branched for Apple 9? And no, it's not. And we can say, um, I'm going to actually do a proper live demo and not cheat by using some of the repos that got pre-generated. But if it fails, we can go down to it. Hey, if I want to um, branch uh, eternal terminal for Enterprise Linux 9, what do I need? Um, this will take a while because um, if the DNF repo query cache is not is not up to date, so <laughs> yeah, um, I really love doing this in Python click because like uh, God, like uh, I hate doing um, using upbars to do this. It also makes it much um, easier to basically like um, I. I have proper unit tests for everything, but uh, the uh, like uh, the CLIs. I know it's possible to test your CLIs too. I just haven't gotten onto that yet. So let's look at this package. Um, so basically, it it saves the report to a file. So like, um, and then it also like um, it also um, output it on the command line. And if I if I do it again, it's going to be really fast because it's like, oh, well, I already have data for this. I don't need to um, compute it again. So ET requires catch devil and uh, gflex devil. Uh, and if we do, I'm so glad I renamed the uh, unfold and iterate because the old names are so, so horrible. So basically, given given the repo file, which was ET Apple 9, um, unfold it, which means now we know that, hey, we need to look up like catch and gflex. And now if I decide that I don't want uh, one of them, I can go in and this is the part that's not automatic yet. I can say, hey, um, I think we don't actually need catch. So let's skip it. But we want to expand gflex. Now we do a branch, the same build requirements using that report. Wait, no one. Iterate report. Uh, that's, a, uh, that's a report file. And we are doing this for Apple 9. Um, so the file format might change because it, it's a bit silly specifying it each time. like. Uh, Surely, like in a single report, you don't want to mix and match different branches anyway. And uh, we might have a bug. Shoot. Yeah, that's not supposed to happen. I'll figure out what's wrong. But yeah, basically, uh, what's supposed to happen and what actually happened as of uh, this morning is that now uh, gflex dependencies uh, get added. Typical, like uh, don't make changes when it's working. All the tests are passing, so obviously something is wrong. <laughs> So that's how it's supposed to work. And basically, um, at some point, you reach a steady state. Um, let me go like uh, to the, the files I pre-generated, because those are working. So this is for a different package. So like uh, it's the one that is in the slides, uh, Python B4. So Python B4 takes uh, dkim uh, py and patat. And after you like uh, unfold it once, you have like Python dkim py and Python pad uh, added to the top level. It's like, hey, we need to find out what they depend on. And after you iterate, you get like, oh, the uh, dkim py depends on like these three things, and pad depends on like one other thing. And note that dkim py and pad both depends on pi and ECL. And 
after you iterate another if you iterate another time uh, without actually doing like unfold it will basically output the same thing and say like hey you know actually your dependencies have not actually changed there's no like new brs so the idea is that you iterate uh, you unfold and then iterate unfold iterate until you reach the steady state where uh, you captured all the you have a repo closure of all the dependencies that you don't have um yeah so i'll go back to the slides now since this sadly doesn't work and uh, actually yeah i'll i'll show the bugger um, for this project The demo girls are really not with me today. That's the wrong uh, window. Yeah, I, I was hoping to spend much more time on this, uh, but like, uh, unfortunately, if you look at the comet history, uh, most of the activities so far happened in two bursts, uh, one in January as the, for the POC and like um, one like from like um, <laughs> a couple of days ago up to this morning. So yeah, uh, let's open the Pagel for this. Easy to remember, uh, Pagel slash uh, Apple slash eBranch. The documentation obviously needs help, like it's not like a... Yes, David, I will accept like a PR. So there are some data files, which right now is uh, the two repository files, uh, one for CentOS Xtreme and one for CentOS 9 stream. These are basically taken by installing CentOS in the container and then like uh, grabbing all the repository files in etc um, repos of D and squashing them together and then renaming them. So instead of, you know, PSOS and AppStream, it's C8 space OS and disabling them by default, uh, changing certain things. Like basically, I expanded like uh, the the release, so now it's hard coded. It's, uh, it's... and the same thing for like uh, CentOS 9s. So yeah, um, Troy wants to try this on OpenCV. Um, so if uh, if there are no more questions, uh, or people can jump in uh, to the session if they want to ask anything. I might try and fix it uh, either like uh, between now and the Hackfest or during the Hackfest. Because damn it, that thing worked this morning. No question? All right. Oh, hey, Sean. Hey. I'll just close it off then. Um, there's no more questions. And uh, thanks, Michelle, for the uh, for this presentation. As you mentioned, there is a, uh, a Apple packaging hack fest that'll be in, what, 27 minutes, I suppose. So take a break, hang out in the hallway track, and uh, see everybody then for the for last session of the, of the day. Excuse me. Thank you. All right. See you everyone in half an hour.